happened. As regards your presidential quest, because you left the PDP and you came to the APC and thinking that you were going to get the presidency, but what happened during the primaries? Some say you were outmuscled, you couldn't fight the financial firepower of the people. Was that the case? And that's why a lot of people say now you are coming back to take a position with the Senate. And I also like to ask you, there's been back and forth. You said you were going to deliver your state for the APC. And in fact, you said, oh, an Igbo candidate, that is Peter B, that's also running in your state, that you will deliver your state for APC. What happens to that Igbo presidency you once touted? A lot of people said maybe this was the time you, you were going to align ranks since Peter Obina is on the ballot and you were once pushing for that Igbo presidency at a point and that's why you offered yourself to run for presidency. Dave, who might have failed woefully. Uh, Rufa, don't allow me to run foul of the Electoral you know, uh, Act because uh, campaign has not started. But let me just uh, quickly say that um, I didn't push, you know, from uh, PDP to APC to have, uh, you know, uh, the ticket of uh, uh, APC as, uh, you know, her presidential candidate. No, I, I foresaw that uh, the PDP was not going to give a, you know, ticket to uh, uh, an Igbo man. And I said, no, that was not fair because we have served this party since 1999. And that was my position. And uh, a lot of people that are crying today were the people that were attacking me for leaving the party at that stage. And subsequently, they left. And so they, 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 they owe me uh, uh, a lot of apologies, you know. And that is what you know, I need to say. And I want to let you know, and uh, I say this, you know, Peter B is my brother. I'm very proud of what he's doing. And uh, uh, it wouldn't have been a disaster if a Southeast uh, is not here at all in the quest for presidency. And I wish him well. What happened to me at the presidential primary is the will of God. Because in all my outing, you know, uh, prior to that primary, I continue to say that the will of God, you know, is supreme in my life. Mm. And so I had to submit to the will of God. But let me also tell you something that, you know, every uh, aspirant of uh, uh, APC, including uh, your uh, uh, sister Agomese, swore an oath of allegiance and then, you know, uh, in court. And, the, you, know, the, uh, you know, the letters of that oath of allegiance you know, are there and that we swore that we have to support our party. And the, I did that, and the, I swore to uphold the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And so I want to leave it there until campaign starts. So you support, <laughs> so that means for you it's about your party over the Igbo presidency, that you once started as injustice over the years to your yeah. own people. So it's about your party over the Igbo presidency, your kingsman. No comments. I have answered my, your question, and I say to you that campaign has not started. When campaign starts, we will be answering questions like this, because as you know, a man that swore to uphold the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I should just, you know, uh, uh, just do that. Uh, and this is very important. Certainly, Governor, the campaign hasn't started yet, but it would be good if we can get your views on a few things around your party politics, because um, like my colleague said, you were pushing for an Igbo presidency. So it would be, it, it, I'm interested in knowing how you see um, your party's ticket now, not just given the presidential candidates, but the fact that the vice presidential candidate is from the Northeast. It looks like, um, Ipo's missed out completely in the yeah, APC. Well, he don't know what to say again. He failed woefully. Well, there is no doubt that uh, the the, the Ibos missed uh, you know so much in uh, APC, but they they missed terribly much in uh, in PDP because I you know had said it several that uh, if the Ibos you know uh, you know would serve the APC the number of years they serve PDP and I deny ticket, you know, that it will not, uh, I will not be happy about that. So, I, I don't morally, you know, uh, uh, I don't have, you know, uh, any anger in me to say that it must be me. No, uh, I just did my bit and to demonstrate the fact that we have materials. Uh, and for me, uh, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, who becomes the president of Nigeria, 
I want to suggest to Nigerians that we should talk on issues. You know, we should talk on issues uh, because uh, the truth is that this issue of religion is honestly being used to deceive, you know, uh, 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 the masses, you know, because we don't really practice the religion that is in our mouth in Nigeria. You know, otherwise, you find out, you know, who are the, the, the bandits, you know, in the north. Are they not, you know, uh, uh, religious people? You know, who are the people that are killing in south, south, and southeast, you know, are they not religious people? So, I think we should, you know, think more about how to address, you know, the, the problems of this nation. And uh, it is high time we stop deceiving the masses, you know, with religion. Well, um, uh, Governor, let me ask you uh, uh, this. Um, recently, the 23 presidential uh, aspirants on the platform of the APC were supposed to meet uh, in Abuja, but that didn't happen. What exactly happened? And it looks like your party is uh, in disarray. Will it be correct to say so? Well, uh, I think that it was a private arrangement in the sense that, you know, um, I know of, uh, you know, my brother uh, uh, from uh, Edo State, you know, who contested, and uh, he was the one sending text messages, you know, to the likes of uh, the vice president, to the likes of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Rotimi and Meiji, uh, to sitting governors, you know, inviting them for a meeting. I think that was very much improper. And that's why such a meeting did not hold. So a leader has emerged in the person of uh, Asiwaju. And uh, it's his responsibility, you know, to call those who contested with him, to, you know, to a meeting. And not somebody, you know, who didn't even come, you know, sixth, you know, to be inviting people uh, uh, in a meeting. And so, so much, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, so that's what happened. So it was a personal thought, you know, by one single person you know, without consultation. And also, so, so take it uh, as such. All right, great people. All right, freedom fighters. I hope every one of you heard the question they have been asking or they asked Dave Omahi. Now, I hope you begin to understand that Dave Omahi have failed woefully. Dave Omahi is nowhere to be found. Dave Umayi was championing the marginalization of Biafran people. Dave Umayi was championing Igbo presidency last year, early this year. Dave Umayi was saying that the Biafran people have been marginalized, that they never been a president since the amalgamation of that contraption. That is what Dave Umayi had been saying. And I want you people to understand that Dave Umahi was a former boy boy to Fulani. Dave Umahi with his stupid political ambition. I said his stupid political ambition. They have failed him woefully. The masters of Dave Umahi have failed him. Dave Umahi is dead on arrival. Dave Umahi is a dead on arrival. Now you begin to understand it. Do you know that Dave Omahi pack rice, a truck and trailers of rice from a bunny down to Fulani because he want to buy a position of president or vice president. And now Dave Omahi even don't have none of them. Now he's, <laughs> he's looking for Senate. And he's not sure that they will give it to him. Our leader, Mazin Nam Kano, said, you will serve Fulani and definitely you must come back in shame. All of them, they are coming back in shame. They are nowhere to be found. And I keep on telling you people, the reason why you are seeing all these shenanigans is because the Biafran people are not part of Nigeria. You people are not part yeah, you begin to see it. Dave Omahi is running away from Igbo presidency. If you people haven't forgotten, because of the same issue of Igbo presidency, these people gathered and 
adopted our leader. They kidnapped our leader in Kenya and renditioned him to that contraption called Damine Buzu today. Our leader is in the hands of DSS. Because of the same, their stupid political ambition that if Mazen Nandekano is out, that this presidency cannot get to them. That is how they kidnap our leader. And I am telling them that they should go and release our leader because all of them have failed woefully. The reason why they are holding the Mazen Namdekanu today, we could not see any sign of it. So it's better they go and release our only Hindu. Let him come back and join his family. Because they have failed. Dave Umahi is running away. Can't you see it? He have failed. Listen to what Rufai asked him. But let me introduce myself before I will go in detail. Great people, freedom fighters, lovers of freedom, are great people all over the world. You are welcome once again on IPOB Rapture Media under the leadership of Mazin Nandi Okukan, where we always set the record straight. My name's all Mazo Kenna Okechuku, known as the Pia Franchise Wachineke, the general. Now listen very careful and let me your ears. And you, you will understand every single thing that is going to come out from my mouth. Rufai asked Dave Umahi, you run from PDP to APC because of your political ambition. And you were championing the Igbo presidency. Why are you running away now from Igbo presidency? Now you begin to understand this. All of them have failed. All of them have failed. From beginning to the end, they have failed. And Dave Umahi was doing all these things. Remember that the ESN have countered the terrorists that are coming from Chad, Nigel, Mali, trooping into Ebony. We finish them. We chase them away. And Dave Umahi went to Fedra in Abuja, from his masters. Those people have already did something from his backyard. From his back. They have did something from his backyard. That is why you see these people have vowed that they must defend Fulani. Dave Umani went to Fulani land and called the terrorists to begin to kill our people in Ebony because of this evil presidency. And Dave Umani was championing the marginalization of the Biafran people. Today, Dave Umani have died on arrival. Now you understand what I'm saying. Dave Umani is nowhere to be found. Now they ask him a question. He say he have put it in God's hand. You see, that is the way they will keep on deceiving you, the gullible ones in that contraption. Because they have failed. I want you to understand that Rufai also asked Dave Umani now. Are you going to take your party over your king's men, over the Igbo presidency? Dave Umahi has no answer. He said no comment because you know why? He has failed woefully. Dave Umahi, there is no more presidency. There is no vice presidency. Dave Umahi, he, he is trying to run for Senate. And I am telling you, he is not also sure that they will give him any seat in Senate because they have failed. Now, hope those of them will have taken over Dave Umahi. Dave Umai have fed up. Fulani have finished using Dave Umai and they have dumped him. And Dave Umai now, he said no comment. <laughs> now you understand what we are talking about. Dave Umai have forgotten the Igbo presidency. And Dave Umai he carried the trucks and trailers of rice from Ebony down to Fulani land because he won them to give him a position. Now you understand it. They have served Fulani and they are coming in chain. There is no two ways about it. And I am telling you, you cannot see Dave Umahi again. He has died. His own is gone. And his own is finished. Now you understand. And I am telling them, they should go and bring our leader out. They should do it first. Because all their political ambition, the reason why they are holding the mass in them, they have failed. So why are they holding our leader? Dave Umahi, if you know what you did, because after they have already finished your backyard, 
after they have already you know cemented your backyard you can never change you have vowed to defend Fulani and keep on maiming and killing your own people now I hope you people get the point and understand that these people they don't even have the words of their own they will say something now Fulani will call them in the middle of the night they will say I am not the one it's my shadow Nowhere to be found. Dave Omahi is running away now from Igbo presidency. Dave Omahi is telling you he don't even care again why he was the one championing the marginalization of Igbo people. Now you see it. These people, they are nowhere. They are nobody. They must listen to their master. And whatever their master told them, that is exactly what they will do. Now you see it. I hope you listen to it. And I hope you get it and understand it. Good day and welcome.